Well, the book, uh, Grief is the Thing with Feathers, tells the story of a man following the death of his wife. And he lives with two sons in a small London flat. And a couple of days after his wife dies, he is visited by a crow, who is a mythological bird. And he's also, the man is a Ted Hughes scholar, Ted Hughes, the English poet, who wrote a very famous book in the 1970s in England called Crow, Life and Songs of the Crow, which was a book he wrote in a very difficult time after the death of his wife, Sylvia Plath. And this man is obsessing about this book at exactly the moment when his wife dies. And sure enough, there is a ring at the door and it is Crow. And he's the character from this book, but he's also the mythological bird, the trickster, and he uh, occupies the position of healer and babysitter and caregiver for the children. And he's also the bird crow, the ornithological character. Um, and he's also a kind of practical joker. And uh, he jokes with himself that he's an accredited caregiver for the children. And he moves in with them and says he won't leave until they're ready. With Grief is the Thing with Feathers, I wanted to find uh, a new way of writing about grief. And I wanted to write something that was very, very honest. And the way I did that was by creating the two characters, dad and boys. Uh, the boys are two brothers, but they have one voice. So in a way, the character is the sibling relationship and they change stories and their stories become each other's stories and they play games with the narrative of, of the loss of their mother. Um, that That is based on the death of my dad when I was six years old. My brother and I were in the flat with my father when he died. And in the years that followed, we found that we were misremembering and willfully remembering things differently and engaged in a constant dialogue between us about how we felt about the loss of our dad. And so I wanted the boys to, to speak as honestly as I possibly could about, about that loss and what it meant to reach adulthood and find that we had different memories and that we'd used the event differently as we became parents ourselves. Uh, the reason I put Crow in is because he was the perfect device because it's not so much Ted Hughes's character, but the object of, of an obsession. And it could have been any obsession. It could have been a man who was obsessed with the lyrics of Bob Dylan or with the paintings of Francis Bacon. It's about how when something very traumatic occurs in your life, you lean on your obsessions. And he admits very early on in the book what bad luck it was for him to have been obsessing about this bird, this, this mischievous, uh, sinister black bird of death at exactly the time when he suffered this great tragedy. But of course the great thing for him, as with life itself, is that it's also very funny. And the bird arrives and he brings with him jokes and vulgarity and great sympathy and empathy and care. And he is exactly the device that I think we all need in times of difficulty, which is to see that through the blackness there is hope and that there is great, great black humour to life. Uh, and the dad is the current throughout the book who stays still. He's the still centre of the book. And I suppose dad is a little bit me, a little bit my father, a little bit my mother and, and my brother. But ultimately he is, he is the voice that is the truest because he is the person that, that is experiencing the loss and also carrying the weight of the loss for his children. And also he gets Crow's voice full in the face. So he experiences the, the noise of the book while, while it's happening elsewhere. And I hope readers will find it interesting and it might speak to people of their own experiences. I hope the brothers would be everyone's siblings and I hope the flat they live in would be everybody's flat. And of course, grief is a universal thing that I think needs looking at and listening to as much as we possibly can. <laughs>